guys! Welcome to the 17th episode of Sketch Support. It's been a while, so I'm really excited to get back into my regular posting schedule. The end of 2021 presented some major challenges work-wise, and Sketch Support had to be something that was put on the back burner for a bit. And I hated to do it because it's my absolute favorite, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm just glad that crazy time is behind me and I am super, super happy to be back. So I have a new free one page sketch to share with you that you can all download at scrapbookgeneration.com. There's also a three page PDF download that has 23 more sketch examples, all based on this one sketch. It's a really good visual for some of the many changes you can make to this sketch to help it better fit your needs. I'll link to both in the description down below. And while you're looking for those links, you might as well go ahead and hit subscribe as well. In this video, I'm sharing four layouts that have all used that same one page sketch as the starting point, and each layout looks completely different. Sketch support is all about showing how to use sketches and that you can easily adapt and customize a sketch to better fit your needs. I always say that sketches are not a rule you have to follow. They are simply a starting point that you can use to build ideas from. And there is no right or wrong way to use a sketch. You can follow them exactly, or you can take a single element and build from there and end up with a layout that looks nothing like the sketch. Sketches are just there to help you get started. I've also got a sketch support Facebook group that you can join and either share your layouts based on these sketches or you can see what others have created with them. And I'll link to it down below as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in with a look at the sketch that I have used as the starting point for each layout in this video. This sketch has three photos, two wallet size and one two by two inch photo, and then a background made up of two rows of three inch circles covering a 12 by six inch space. When I created this sketch, I envisioned those circles being slightly different, whether it's different colors or patterns or textures. I just thought it would be a fun background design to play around with. There's really so much you can do with them from changing the size and amount that you use to using completely different shapes in place of those circles, or really creating any kind of 12 by six inch background, whether it's a simplified single piece or maybe many pieces grouped together to cover that same general area. As far as the photos, because they are at the bottom where there is lots of empty space and they are tightly grouped together, it's really easy to work in a larger single photo here if you want to. Really, there are tons of different photo options you could play around with, both larger and smaller or less or more, depending on what you need. For my first layout, I stayed very close to the sketch. I just adapted it slightly to better fit the theme and my photos. Really, the biggest change I made was flipping the sketch. For this sketch, really that just means that I moved the photos from the right side to the left side while keeping my title and journaling on the inside edge of the photos. The most common reason that I will flip a sketch has to do with my photos and the direction of my subject. For example, with these two photos, my son Jackson is facing the right. If I had kept my photos on the right, he would be looking off the layout. And I just really don't like that. To me, it pulls attention off the layout. It's kind of like when someone points and you just automatically look, even just for a second. Now I get that that might sound kind of silly. Who cares if someone looks off your layout for a millisecond? It's not 
just that someone might actually look off the layout. To me, it's distracting and just looks, for lack of a better word, wrong. I would rather use that directional focus in my photos and use it to my advantage and have it pointing towards the middle of my layout, towards some important details like my title and my journaling. So this is probably 99% of the time why I will flip a sketch. For my main set of circles, the colored ones behind the baseballs, they are all just as they are on the sketch. But instead of stars, I decided to go a little more theme heavy. I love playing around with themes and finding fun ways to incorporate them into the design. The stars would have been just fine for my theme, but the baseballs just seemed a little more fun for these photos. I have three different sizes of circles for the baseballs, and I added them all except for this one with foam adhesive. I'm always looking to add dimension to my layouts, and I thought the baseballs would look good popped up off the page a little. For the baseball stitching detail, I used my silhouette to cut those pieces out of a red cardstock. The next change I made was adding a lot more detail to the design. It all started with this baseball glove embellishment and I just kept adding. I have had these tickets forever and I thought it might be kind of cool to add a few peeking out here and there and then that resulted in adding some stars and then more stars and then even more stars until I had this whole kind of spread of stars and tickets and word stickers going diagonally across the circle design. The last detail I want to point out with this layout is on the base paper. I have a hexagon stencil and I thought it would make an interesting, almost chain link fence look. I used the stencil with a lighter ink and blending brush to add a subtle pattern on the paper. I didn't cover the whole paper, I just have it peeking out mainly behind the circle design and then a little at the top and bottom edge. I thought it was a low key way to make a background that kind of tied to my baseball theme. My second layout still follows that circle design, but I used much smaller size and included more rows to create a flag design. When I was flipping through photos trying to decide what to use with this sketch, I came across this one of my son Drew holding two flags. It's kind of funny, but immediately I asked myself, could I create a flag out of tons of small circles? And I'm always up for a good creative challenge, so I decided that I was gonna give it a shot. I'm so glad I did, because this turned out way cooler than what I had in my head, and it's so rewarding when that happens. And sometimes you take that leap with an idea, and it's a giant failure, and sometimes it's a big win. And that's why I always take the leap. The failure is still a lesson learned and the win can produce some of your favorite layouts. So it's always worth the risk to me. To create this flag, I used all one inch circles in place of the three inch circles on the sketch. In the top left corner, I used blue circles to cover a five by four inch area. And then to fill in the rest, I alternated rows of red and white pattern paper to create the stripes. I used a variety of blues, reds, and white pattern papers for this look. I wanted there to be a lot of different patterns to add interest to this design. I also wanna point out that this design would work perfectly with six by six inch paper pads or just using the smaller circles in general, not necessarily the flag design. 
I love using six inch papers with designs made up of smaller pieces like this because the patterns are smaller as well. And we have tons and I mean tons of six by six inch paper pads at Scrapbook Generation if you are looking for a good selection and variety of themes. Originally, I had planned on matching that same combined six inch height of the circles on the sketch, but I wasn't happy with the color order that I ended up with when only using six rows of circles. It left me with a top red stripe and then this white stripe at the bottom. And to me it looked better with a red stripe at both the top and the bottom. And there's plenty of room to add another row of circles so I didn't have to adjust anything for that extra row to fit. I wanted to add some texture to that flag background as well, so I added some hand stitch borders on some of the circles. To complete the flag look, I used white cardstock stars on the center of each blue circle. It's a slight change from the sketch with the stars on all circles, but I wanted this to really come together as an American flag and I felt those stars should be on the blue circles to achieve that look. And then to add a little sparkle and texture to those stars, I also added some white glitter on top of them. For my photo, I substituted a six by four inch photo in place of the three smaller photos on the sketch. As a whole, those three photos are close enough to the same size of a six by four inch photo, so I didn't really have to make any adjustments for it to fit in that area. Even the title and the journaling are still in roughly the same place as they are on the sketch. This was a very easy photo substitution. Replacing multiple smaller photos grouped together with a single larger photo is always a great way to adjust a sketch to better fit the photo size and amount of photos that you have. With this layout, I gave a whole new look to the sketch design by simply switching the circles to themed elements and rotating the sketch. I knew right away with this sketch that I wanted to use a themed element in place of the circles for at least one of the layouts. So when I came across these photos, I had a vision of using lots of clouds and hot air balloons. And lucky for me, I just saw this collection from Pretty Little Studio at Scrapbook Generation. And the second I saw the hot air balloons, I knew it was the perfect collection for these photos and the idea I had for this sketch. Now I could have kept the sketch as it was without rotating it and make it work that way, but I really liked the idea of having the clouds and balloons going all the way up the page. I wanted it to look like a big sky full of hot air balloons. My original plan was to create this scene with just the clouds and hot air balloons on their own but this collection had this really fun sunburst paper and I thought it would make a really great background for this sky scene. Pretty Little Studio mainly makes eight by eight inch papers, so that's what I was starting with. I cut two eight by eight inch sheets of this sunburst design into six by six inch squares and place them together to create one big six by 12 inch sunburst. I added a balloon and cloud over the seam to help hide it so it looks like one big piece. To really make that sunburst design stand out, I also added stitch lines on the edges of the yellow sunbeams. 
I also added a few strips to the edges of this sunburst background. The blue and white striped strips were the first that I added and I had no intention of adding more, but on my almost completed layout, I had a little watercolor mishap. I had already added the lighter blue watercolor and I wanted to go in with just a few darker blue dots to coordinate with the tiny bits of darker blue in some of the hearts and the title. And in the top left corner, I accidentally made a huge splotchy smear of dark blue. It was not quite the subtle little accent I was looking for. So I ended up using the dark blue strips to help me cover up at least a little bit of my mistake. You can still see a little bit of it peeking out there, but it's not near as distracting as it was. And I ended up really liking the darker blue and how it matches the title color. I feel like it gives a better spread of that dark blue throughout the whole layout. For my photos, I had two three by five inch photos to use. And by tightly grouping the two photos together where they are overlapped onto each other and with all of this extra space to the right, there really wasn't much to adjust to make it work. The only change I made was moving my journaling to the top edge of the photos instead of near the bottom. For my clouds and hot air balloons, I adhered most of them with foam adhesive to add some dimension. I also added some extra detail like the hearts and word and phrase stickers. On the white phrase stickers, I added a black pen border around them. I thought it helped coordinate them with the black lines on the balloons and the clouds. I also did the same with my journaling strips. On the blue hearts, I added some glitter and on the clouds with the blue watercolor edge, I used my Wink of Stella glimmer brush to add a subtle sparkle. The last layout is all about showing how you don't have to let the size of the sketch determine the size of your layout. I will often use a one page sketch to make a two page layout or vice versa. There are so many ways you can stretch, shrink, repeat, extend, or condense to make it work on a different size. I always like showing that during sketch support. With this sketch, I created a two page layout by extending the design across two pages by adding more circles. Or in the case of this particular layout, I added more squares across the layout. There are two easy formulas I like to use for using a one page sketch to create a two page layout. You can either stretch or extend the design. With stretching, it's like you are taking the design and pulling it across to stretch it to the other side. For example, if this was a single 12 by six inch solid piece, stretching it would be like grabbing this end and pulling it to be a 24 by six inch piece going across the layout. With extending, you are adding more of the design onto the second page by repeating elements to fit on two pages. For example, with this layout, you would repeat the circles across the second page, just like they are on the first page. I hope that makes some sense, the difference between stretching and extending. They are very similar, but can produce very different results depending on the sketch you are using. When I started this layout, I had every intention of following the sketch very closely with the circles, but 
I absolutely love this collection from Simple Stories. So I was trying to kind of think ahead as far as how I use this paper and what potential scraps I would have left over after I cut out the circles. I wanted to be left with something I could easily use later on. So I cut four inch squares of the pattern papers and then used my silhouette to cut out a three inch circle in the center. My plan was to cut the circles in the middle so that I was left with a square with a circle frame that I could use on future layouts. And this is one of the things I love about creating. I think it's so fun how you could have an idea and then something else completely unintentional comes along and gives you an even better idea. And this was one of those moments for me. After all of those squares were cut, I really liked the idea of using them instead of the circles. I love the idea that they create kind of a reversal of the circle design. And one of the big benefits to using the squares instead came down to my photos. My original plan was to include several three inch circle photos, but I was nervous about cutting those because I had printed them long ago as three by three inch squares. So I had to be super careful when cutting them. There was no room for error. But then I realized if I used the squares instead, I could use them as a frame and I wouldn't have to cut my photos at all. So this felt like a win-win to me. I could create this cool reversal design and have an easier option for my photos. I think including photos with the circles is a great way to include more photos for a two page design and it adds even more fun detail to that circle design. You could also add some circle photos in on a one page version too. I ended up swapping out the stars for hearts to better fit my theme. I used foam adhesive to give them some dimension and added them to the center of the circles without photos. I also added a lot of extra details to every circle. I felt like each one was its own little mini design where I could have some fun with different embellishments and details. There are word and phrase stickers, arrows, chipboard pieces, speech bubbles, flowers, a tag. I also added a lot of hand stitching to this layout. For the open circles, I added a stitch border on the inside and the circles with photos, I added a stitch border on the outside. For these, I used the same neutral color. Then I also added a stitched border on the hearts. Pretty much any time I have a simple punched shape like a heart, a star, a circle, or a hexagon, I'm going to add a stitch border to it. To me, it adds a nice little finishing touch of texture and detail to a simple piece. For those hearts, I used a color of embroidery floss that matches the color of the heart. Most of my photos are in a circle frame, but I had one that was printed as a four by six inch photo and I wanted to highlight it on its own. I added it to the same general area as the three smaller photos on the sketch, but I straightened it and added it in place of one square. And to help bring attention to it, I added a chipboard frame, the title, and a few embellishments. With all of those changes I made to the sketch, I left myself without a lot of room for my journaling. My solution was to add a journaling block to the top left corner. I thought that was a nice balance to the larger photo on the right page. I really like having balance on my layout, so I pay attention to little details like that. On the right page, the photo frame is about three quarters of an inch from the bottom, so I added my journaling block details at about the same distance from the top of the layout. I really like that kind of balance.
Well, that is all for this episode of Sketch Support. Don't forget, we've also got a Sketch Support Facebook group where you can share your layouts based on this sketch. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.